us. Because you disagree with them. And now you're seeing a mass murder of Shiite Muslims. Again, because of what? But the Shahada says, I bear witness that there's no God but Allah and that Muhammad is his messenger. Listen, once you declare that, it does not matter what else you believe. Listen, no, this has to be understood and appreciated. Once you bear witness that there is no God but Allah, the originator of the heavens and the earth, and the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was given the message of the Quran directly by God to mankind. You could believe that pigs could fly. You could believe in all types of magic and superstition and all different types of myths and stories and anecdotes and in all types of spooked up issues. Once you bear witness to that, your other beliefs do not matter as far as Islam is concerned. But they are conjuring up all different types of peripheral teachings and then making it mandatory for you. And then saying, you don't believe unless you believe in that. According to Abdullah Hamid Quick in Islam, Slavery and the African, he said the Arab people on the Arabian Peninsula are today a mixed people. Colored definitions of Arabian peoples, though, is generally new. Herodotus and other Greek and Roman historians in looking at ancient Egypt described the people as dark-skinned, woolly-haired. But from the 16th century, slavery itself was redefined by color. Now, I just want to deal with this, and then I'm closing up. We were enslaved. We were rescued mentally by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. We were resurrected. It is part of the doctrine of Islam to end slavery. In the definition of our religion, Surah 2 verse 177, in all of the criteria for our religion, it says, and those who emancipate slaves. That is part of your religion. Surah 90 verse 6 says, to the Muslims that we must take the uphill road and it asks them what will make you understand what the uphill road is? It is the freeing of a slave. According to Imam Abdullah Hakim Quick, he says the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, himself freed 63 slaves. Aisha freed 67 slaves. The Prophet's uncle Abbas, whom the Abbasid Caliphate were named after, freed 70 slaves. Hakim Ibn Hassan freed 100 slaves. And then other Wealthy men who came into Islam freed even thousands of slaves. One particular ruler was credited as freeing 8,000 slaves. Now, they enslaved us, but because we were African. But within the life of the Prophet himself, remember the Prophet said in his last message before he passed away, that there's no superiority of the Arab over the non-Arab and no superiority of the white over the black. And when he sent Abu Bakr Siddiq to purchase the freedom of Bilal who was enslaved, when Bilal came among the Muslims, they did not have to teach him Islam. He knew Islam already. Because in his ancient age old African tradition, there was always the belief in the oneness of God. It was the Arabians who were polytheistic. And then the Prophet Muhammad said to his wife, Aisha, take Bilal's word for any tradition of mine, for he never lies. He also said he had a vision where he heard the footsteps of Bilal entering into paradise ahead of his own. The Prophet said, in context of the racism that the Arabs were practicing, that if a man comes among you whose skin is as black as soot and his hair is like dried raisins, if he is entrusted with authority, then you must obey him. And he said, let him who best knows the book of Allah be the leader of the community and let him who is the most virtuous give the call to prayer. And he chose Bilal to give the call to prayer as the most virtuous in that community. So as I conclude, beloved, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, addressed racism within his community. There's one hadith 
of a black man who was part of the mosque. He used to clean the mosque and one day the prophet went to the mosque and didn't see him and he asked about him and they told him that he died and they buried him. And the prophet was so angry that they buried this black man without even the dignity and respect of a funeral. He told them to dig back up the dead body of the black man and then they gave him a funeral. Malana Muhammad Ali in Living Thoughts of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him on page 65 wrote the Arabs had as a strong race and college prejudices as any modern white nation yeah. and a far stronger language prejudice wow. we tend to pass on these Arabization prejudices to each other as yes, black people yes, and you measuring how Islamic a brother is based on how much surahs he knows in Arabic yeah. but what about measuring a brother by how much surahs is he practices yeah. rather than how much he can recite yeah. praise be to Allah Malana Muhammad Ali continues, he said, the Arabs considered themselves as a much superior race yeah. as regards the Negroes, they did not recognize them except as slaves. The immediate task before the Prophet was therefore to blot out the race, color, and language prejudices from the Arab mind as the Arab was to be the torchbearer of the light for the rest of the world. The Quraysh tribe would not sit in the Prophet's company because they said he mixed too freely with what they considered to be the lower class or lower strata of society. They themselves scorned him because he did not scorn black people. Bilal was chosen as one of the two main office holders. And I remember when I was here last year, I shared some fabricated hadith. Right. <laughs> of which I'll run through a couple quotes on, for you here which highlight the racism of the Arab people. Al-Tabiri volume 9 page 69 says quote Arabs are the most noble people in lineage the most prominent and the best in deeds. Please remember that one because I have to come back to that in a short while. Ibn Tamir, volume 31, pages 376 to 377. says, if a child is not born of the race of Arabs, then he is definitely to be an owned slave, according to the scholars. Well, we'll challenge that one right away. Allah says in the Quran, Surah 2, verse 221, do not marry unbelieving women until they believe. For a slave woman who believes is better than an unbelieving woman, even though she allures you. Nor marry your girls to unbelievers until they believe. A man slave who believes is better than an unbeliever, even though he allures you. Come on, come on. Al-Tabiri, volume 2, page 11. Listen to this, speaks of one of the Arabs. It says, he prayed that the Africans color would change so that their descendants would be slaves to the Arabs and Turks. Mishkat volume 3 page 117 he stroked his left shoulder and took out a black race as if they were coals then he said to those who were on the right side towards paradise I guess that means we're going to hell right? Listen to this one. Ibn Musa al-Yashubi, page 375, says, A companion said, quote, Anyone who says that the prophet was black should be killed. But, to answer that, and listen to what Allah says in the Quran now, as I conclude. Surah 9 verse 97. So what, what was that one that I asked you to remind me of? It was Al-Tabari volume 9 page 69. Arabs are the most noble people in lineage, the most prominent and the best in deeds. Well, let's see what Allah says about that. 
Amen. Surah 9, verse 97. I am not making this up. <laughs> Says, quote, The Arabs of the desert are the worst in unbelief and hypocrisy and most fitted to be in ignorance of the command which Allah has sent down to his messenger. We go in with what the Quran says. So, slavery did exist, but it was the objective of the community to do all that we could to emancipate the slaves. And even in the event that we were interacting with slaves, the Prophet gave guidelines, as in Sahih Muslim Book 20 on government, Hadith 4528 says, quote, If a slave is appointed over you and he conducts your affairs according to the Book of Allah, you should listen to him and obey his orders. Hadith Qudsi 21 out of the 40 says there are three types of men whose adversary I shall be on the day of resurrection. One is a man who has given his word by me and has broken it. Two is a man who has made a slave out of another and sold him. And the third is a man who has hired a workman, exacted his due in full from him and has not given him his wage. In Al-Bukhari book 46, it is entitled The Manumission of Slaves. And it explains from the Prophet, your slaves are brethren upon whom Allah has given you authority. So if one has one's brethren under one's control, one should feed them with the like of what he eats and clothe them with the like of what he wears. You should not overburden them with what they cannot bear. And if you do, then help them in their work. Now, that basically is eliminating the conditions of slavery under a law where slavery exists. Could you imagine us as slaves or white people and the white people helping us? The prophet says, when your servant brings you meals, let him sit with you and share the meal. If not, you should at least give him a mouthful or two mouthfuls of that meal or a meal or give him two meals when you have had one. And so, I conclude here saying that in all of that history and where we fit in, Bear in mind, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, three generations after him shall no longer be of him. You have clearly seen for yourself that they violated all of the terms and conditions for leadership that the Prophet established. But he also said there will be a thousand year period of darkness in Islam. And then he said the son of Islam will rise in the west in the latter days and shine his light back to the east. And around that time, Master Farad Muhammad was teaching the Honorable Elijah Muhammad Islam. We were never invited to the mosque. They never gave us a Quran or the Hadith. They never discussed the Prophet with us. But when the Honorable Elijah Muhammad took the Bible and taught us more Islam from the Bible than the Arabs have taught us from the Quran. Then all of a sudden they became concerned and interested about the brand of Islam that we were following. We would go into their communities and shop from them. They would sell us pork. They would put a glove on their left hand to put it on the scale and sell it to us. Even at a time when they would not even touch it with their right hand. And we were seen as the burden bearers. We were seen as inferior, not worthy of being Muslims. 
And so Allah says in Surah 5 verse 68 in the Quran to my Muslim brothers and sisters, Allah says, you follow no good until you also follow the Torah and the gospel as well as the book. That's the Bible. How could you criticize us for using the Bible when Allah says you follow no good until you also follow us in it? And when the Honorable Elijah Muhammad went to black communities and picked up that Bible, he extracted from it Matthew chapter 4 verse 10 where Jesus said, Thou shalt worship the one God and him alone shall you serve. John chapter 14 verse 28, Jesus said, My father is greater than I. Mark chapter 12 verse 28, they asked Jesus which was the greatest commandment and he said that the Lord our God is one God. La ilaha illallah. Mark chapter 10 verse 18. Jesus says when they praised him, why are you calling me good? There is none good but the one who is God. And John chapter 8 verse 28, Jesus says, I of myself can do nothing. Luke chapter 11, 20 speaks of Jesus casting out devils by the power of God. And Matthew chapter 6 verses 9 to 13 and Luke chapter 11 verses 2 to 4, when Jesus was asked, how shall we pray? He said, pray like this, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, not my name. Thy kingdom come, not my kingdom come. Thy will be done, not my will be done. On earth as it is in heaven the exalted state and even though beloved as i finish even though in the church they were telling our people worship jesus pray to jesus pray to mary worship the saints the honorable elijah muhammad picked up that bible and showed us the teaching and truth of Islam from it and after he woke us up with that Bible he said this is the book for you to govern your life by the Holy Quran and he established that community of Muslims all over the world a couple days ago I was walking through the streets of Brooklyn and saw so many Muslims of different schools of thought and backgrounds, but all of them with their root in the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. All of the Muslims, all of the black Muslims. And we put a curse on ourselves when we bite the hand that has fed us. When we slander and malign and backstab and evil speak of those who were responsible for showing us the light. What arrogance it is when we can claim to think that we more know no more than the teacher, the teacher himself at the time had no tools whatsoever, just the spirit of Allah that enlightened his mind, Allah and the person of Master Fran Muhammad who gave him an understanding of Islam. And so beloved, today, today in 2017, in coming up out of this blessed holy month of Ramadan, I express my deep gratitude to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan for giving us this understanding, for giving us the guidance, but also for preparing us for the dreadful times ahead. So that after he goes, he is putting things in place to ensure and guarantee the stability, love, order, harmony, and peace within our community as he instructs us to simply continue to love one another. And he said we have to love one another more than we have been hating ourselves because the self-hatred that we have demonstrated has destroyed us and that self-destruction now does not come from the violence in front of us on a day-to-day -day basis but it also comes from a whole system of living, a cycle of mental genocide that is producing self-destruction from death and ignorance. But we pray, Almighty God, Allah, that we are saved in this day and time by light illuminating the minds of our people from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And so I'd like to thank each of you so much for being patient with me. Thank you for listening. And may Almighty God, Allah, continue to bless you as I greet you in peace. As-salamu alaykum.
Come on, let's give our brother another well-deserved round of applause. All praise is due to Allah. All praise is due to Allah. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. We got to give God the, God the glory. God is the greatest. Is that right? Getting greater and greater every day. Brothers and sisters, please, as you take your seats, we just want to find out from you all. How many of you are glad that you came today by a show of hands? Praise be to Allah, you know, we're glad to have you and we want to make sure that this message here is, as the minister requested, is put into his hands so he can get a chance to see and hear for himself because based off of the title, he wanted to know how brother was going to lay this thing out, you know. And you know, and, and are there any of you here for your first time by show of hands, never been to the mosque before? Can you just stand so we can see you? Just, just take a stand. All praise to Allah. All right, all right. Allahu Akbar. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. All praise is due to Allah. I mean, look, I, I, I'm overwhelmed as I heard brother give what he gave and his representation, I mean, you know, I love the teachings of the Nation of Islam. I love Islam, but to hear somebody represent us, you know what I mean, and represent Islam and represent truth, it just really warms your spirit. How many of you here believe what you heard to be the truth and good for us as a people? Can I see by a show of hands? Because truth is independent of itself. Is that right? All praises due to Allah. Now there are some of us here that already are in the Islamic community. So you know we're just joining on to one another in fellowship. We know we got a work to do. But those of you who are here for your first time, I would like to know, based off of your time here and you saying you believe what you heard to be the truth and good for us as a people, how many of you are ready now, after hearing what you heard, ready to take Islam on in your life and come on into the mosque and join hands with us as we work with the minister to help in this work? If you're like that, I want you to stand up because I want you to shake the hand of our brother, student minister, David Muhammad. Brother, please, are there any sisters that want to take on that kind of work, that kind of teaching? Please come forward and let's shake the hand of the student representative of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, our brother David Muhammad. All praises due to Allah. Sisters, please come forward. Please, all praises due to Allah. Don't be shy. Y'all can clap for our brothers and sisters. That's right. Allahu Akbar. Brother David. Yes, sir. Brother David, you got some sisters over here that want to shake your hand as well. All praises due to Allah. Allahu Akbar. Yes. Yes. That's right. That's right. Y'all may have a seat. You can sit right here on the front row. Our brothers and sisters will assist you. Look, this is the kind of stuff that makes the devil mad. That's right. That's right. But he makes us glad because he's missing souls that he thought he had. Is that right? 